Welcome into the install with Greg Cosell of NFL Films. Uh, by the time you're hearing this podcast, I don't know if I've been traded, I don't know if Greg's been traded, but everybody else getting traded right now, at least over at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park, Greg. And the deadline is still, as the as of this recording, basically two weeks away. It's been pretty wonky in the NFL right now. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, it's clear, you know, again, we're not in the building with what the conversations are, are going on between Brian Callahan and uh, and Rand Carthon and staff. But, um, you know, I think I think there's a recognition that they're obviously not going to be a playoff contender this year and that it's time to um, add draft picks. And, you know, certainly a, a major part of the NFL is contracts. I'm not an expert on that. You probably know a little more just because you have to talk about that stuff on the radio every day. That's not what I talk about. But I, I know that Ernest Jones was, you know, his contract was up after this year. Um, even someone, I don't know if he's going to get traded, but I think Tyler Boyd's on a one-year deal. You know, guys that are on one-year deals that they're probably not looking to sign to any kind of long-term extension. You know, if you can get a fourth or fifth round pick and you just keep adding and adding and adding, not only do you potentially have more picks, but then you have ammunition for trade. So again, that might sound depressing to some, but I think that's probably what the strategy is going to be. Yeah, and uh, it's it's Ernest Jones to the Seahawks yesterday for Jerome Baker in a fourth round pick. It's DeAndre Hopkins to the Chiefs, which might be a fun one for, uh, you know, at least the football aesthetics for a conditional fifth that can get up to a fourth if the Chiefs are back in the Super Bowl and Hopkins plays 60% of his snaps. They're also eating about two and a half million dollars on the Hopkins contract. So let's let's. Um, talk there Greg then about what the Chiefs look like with uh because we'll talk uh, briefly about the top well we'll talk about the Titans and the Lions well, obviously. I think one quick point screen. you and I had made this point earlier um I love Ernest Jones as a player but Baker is a different player and they yeah. may have felt that they needed more speed because Murray can run but he's also 245 but Baker is a true athlete it's funny I remember talking to Billy Davis who's now the linebacker coach for the Houston Texans has been in DC in this league for a number of teams and he was actually at Ohio State for a couple of years before he got back into the NFL and I and I saw him at the combine I know him pretty well and it was the year that Baker came out and, you know, Ohio State always has guys, you know. But I, I said to him, hey, of your guys, because he was the D.C. there, of your guys, who's the best pro prospect? And he said, oh, Baker. He said he's a stud athlete. He can run. He can hit. He fits the NFL game perfectly. And I think, you know, what Baker gives them, and I have no idea what his contract is. I'm just talking football now. But sure. what, what he gives them is he gives them speed. He gives them inside, outside, play speed and range. And while Murray can run, I wouldn't necessarily say Murray, that's his his full game. Baker is a true stud athlete. Yeah. it's it, Denard Wilson is going to be able to make it work. The defense has obviously not been an overwhelming problem. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, too fair, favorable in Buffalo, so certainly in the second half of that game, because Josh Allen and the Bills figured it out pretty quickly and, and started driving down the field. Basically, they, they scored on every possession in the second half of that game. Yeah, I think Allen in the second half, after sort of a very pedestrian first half, because I remember going through that game and just looking at the numbers, I think Allen was 17 for 22 for 258 in the second half. That's yeah. you'd prefer that not to happen if you're the defense. It's tough. <laughs> but, you know, Greg, I mean, we talk about this, and, yeah. and we're not going to spend too much time on Titans offense today because no, you know, there's no need to. Don't even know who's going to start a quarterback right now. Sounds like it's probably going to be Mason Rudolph again, but that's neither here nor there. That determination is not. Your been defense made, but... ends up playing too many snaps. Yeah, and and it's just and to your point, everything is magnified. We've said this for four years. We've been doing this pod podcast. Yep. Everything is magnified when you cannot score points, and that's there's no I'm margin for error. So every play that that is not a great play looks like, oh my god, they stink, and that's not really the way it is. They actually have a good defense. Yes, uh, it is a defense of a much better football team right now, but. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins goes to the Chiefs before we yeah. talk about the Lions, and that's an interesting one, too, because it's uh, Hollywood Brown, it's Juju Smith-Huster, and it's Rishi Rice, who are going to miss some time, uh, who, who are either going to miss the entirety of the season or miss some time. Now, Juju with the hamstring. Hopkins, you know, longer in the tooth, doesn't necessarily break away from guys, but that's never been his game. This gives Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid a reliable, consistent target, though, Greg. Well, and that's what they're looking for, because quite frankly – 
if you just took, looked at the Chiefs' offense this year without knowing the track record of Mahomes, who some might feel is a Hall of Famer if he retired tomorrow, but we know what his track record is, but let's just talk about this year. It's been a very erratic up-and-down pass game. You could almost make the argument that if, 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 if you didn't know the past, you would say that the Chiefs this year have been built on a consistent, sustaining run game, arguably the best defense in the league, and a quarterback that makes a lot of clutch plays. That's what you'd probably say their offense is. But when it comes to sustaining a pass game, you know, in other words, when it's third and six, completing balls for nine yards, th those kinds of plays. And plus, they've made very few explosive plays. Mahomes is way down in terms of 20-plus yard completions, and normally he's near the top. So they're looking for receivers. Now, Hopkins is not a burner, but they have a burner in Worthy, who they still haven't been quite been able to figure out how to integrate into their offense yet. Um, but, you know, Hopkins gives you that reliable target when it's, you know— it, it, in, in some ways, he's like Rice was going to be this season. Rice probably runs a little better because Hopkins is near, you know, closer to the end. But the same kind of guy that can work between the numbers and give Mahomes those kinds of throws. So, you know, the Chiefs are obviously, they're looking to make a Super Bowl run. And they, they don't know what the receiving situation is going to be for the rest of the year. So they went and got one. Yeah, if I told you that Patrick Mahomes had six touchdowns to eight interceptions so far this season. Yeah. At the start of the year, you'd probably call me a liar, but that's just that's, how and they're finding ways to win. They're six and zero, right? It's not perfect, but they're good at he, problem solving. And he 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 makes those uh, you know plays at, at those critical high leverage moments. But they've really been a team this year that's built more on a sustaining run game and a great defense. So uh, to the local game this week, the Titans are in Detroit. The Lions are rolling. They just handed the Vikings their first loss of the year. A really really fun game. Greg, I'm sure you've had the opportunity to watch oh, yeah. sides of that at this point. The one thing, uh, the place that we'll start, though, is who the Lions are not expected to have. Jameson Williams is uh, facing a yeah. suspension. He's not, you know, they, they have so many different ways to hurt you that it's not that they can't survive the loss of Jameson Williams. But what extra dimension does he provide to that offense? Well, he's one of the few guys in the league that's terrifyingly fast. You know, he's there's maybe four or five guys that are like that. But I will say this. I'm not saying that doesn't matter that he's not there. Okay, obviously it does. When you have that kind of speed, it always matters. But they're so schematically great with their pass game in terms of spacing of routes against zone coverage. Okay, um, I've made this point a lot. I may have made it with you, but you know, it's, I think it's worth saying again. People don't think of an NFL field as confined space because when you watch TV, you can't see the whole field. They think of uh, basketball as confined space. They think of hockey as confined space. Because when you watch those games, you can see the, either the whole court or all the ice. You know, But football, you don't think of it that way. But it's still confined space. So what becomes important in confined space? Spacing. You hear that in basketball all the time. Spacing and floor balance, right? Th th right. Those are two things you hear all the time. That's true in football, too. And... I'm not sure there's a better team in the league, a better coordinator than Ben Johnson, the OC for the Lions, uh, at really understanding and building route concepts and combinations with spacing versus zone coverage. He really knows how to get players into open voids and to put zone defenders in conflict because all zone defenders have multiple things they have to be looking at. They're not just standing there in one spot going, oh, if a guy runs to me, I'll cover him. If not, I'm just going to stand here and do nothing. You know, there's conflict for every zone defender. So Ben Johnson is so good at that. And so with all the different ways, all the different players that they have, golf playing it, I mean, ah. inarguably an MVP level, Greg, right now. I mean, he's just seeing things so clearly. And as you as you described, that offense is so highly schemed, so effectively schemed for him that he just seems to already have the answers to the test pre-snap. And you see the way that he's diagnosing it, defense. I mean, I, don't, I, I looked up his last numbers in his last four games. He's 76 for 91, which is almost 84% in his last four games. And by the way, he's not a check down guy. I mean, he'll throw check downs, but, you know, they attack the intermediate areas between the numbers as well as any team in the league. So he's not throwing easy balls. Um, and he leads the NFL this year at 9.3 yards per attempt, which is a stat a lot of coaches look at. 
and uh, the rushing attack is also it's ba it's uh -huh. balanced, right, Greg? They have they have everything. We can talk yeah. about this ad nauseum. Jameer Gibbs, though, in particular, between David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs, I think they have eleven rushing touchdowns between them at this point, which is crazy to think about. There are also threats in the passing game, not quite as much, but still. Uh, what is the difference between those two players, and what do you like about the way that they get them involved? Montgomery and Gibbs, you're speaking of, Buck. Yeah. Oh. Um, Montgomery is the inside runner who runs with power, but he's got a little more lateral juice than you might think. You know, he's not stiff, but he's a hard inside runner. He's probably 215 pounds. Um, but if he can get clean to the second level, he does have a little shiftiness, as I said, more than some might think. Gibbs is just an explosive, explosive back. I mean, I'm sure everybody saw the 45-yard touchdown run last week. It was his own run. He gets to the second and third level. He is so shifty, so loose-hipped. He made, I forget who he made miss, but it, it, he made him just look silly, you know. And he's he and he's a great receiver too. So he's one of those guys that can take it to the house on any play. You got to be aware of him as a receiver. Montgomery is a grinder. They're predominantly a zone-based run team. But um, but yeah, they're both really good. I I really like Montgomery. I remember watching him at Iowa State. I knew what he was. I mean, I knew he wasn't going to have sixty yard touchdown runs. Right. But he gets more yards with with a little shiftiness and can find space than you might think. In particular, uh, for Gibbs, one hundred and sixteen rushing yards, forty four receiving, one hundred and sixty total, which is a season yeah, he's, high from scrimmage. Last I remember night. watching him um, in my office here at Films. Uh, between his Georgia Tech final season and then going to Alabama. And I was watching him that summer because I said, you know what? He's going to Alabama. He's going to gain a lot of yards. He's going to be in the league. Let me watch him just to get a feel for him. And that day, um, Fred Taylor was in our building and um, he walked by my office and I'd met him. And I, I didn't know him well, but I'd met him. Right. And I said, hey, Fred, come here. And I said, I'm watching this guy, Jameer Gibbs. I said, he's going to be a first round pick. He's going to Alabama, but he's going to be a first round pick after Alabama. And so Fred came in, he looked at him and goes, man, that guy's really, really good. So, you know, you kind of knew that. He just, because he just looks different than most guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. really, really talented. Again, it's just a talented football team. The defense, um, certainly in the secondary, uh, Brian Branch is somebody ah. who continues to pop on film. Greg certainly did in the Minnesota game uh, in and throughout the course of that. Jack Campbell is also an interesting player. Uh, Malcolm Mar Rodriguez as well. It, it's going to be interesting to see what they do at the trade deadline, just to get uh, you know a little uh, a little off topic there, because I don't know if Harold Landry is not auditioning to be the next Detroit Lions pass rusher this week or not, Greg. But they could certainly use uh, somebody in the absence of Aiden Hutchinson. It's still a well, it's still a a, yeah. a a simple defense under Aaron Glenn, but an effective one. Yeah, I mean it's you know Aaron Glenn he plays a lot of different people. You know, you talk about Campbell, they have Anzalone. You know, you talk about linebackers, they play a lot of guys. They played this kid Nowoski this week, 14 snaps, and he yeah. flashed on tape. Um, they, you know, they played, um, they play Reeves Maben, who people know, you know, down in your area because he came from Tennessee. He plays maybe 15 snaps a game in, in their nickel. Um, so they play a lot of guys. Now, you mentioned, you know, the pass rush. Obviously, losing Hutchinson, you know, he, he I think, had the, the highest win rate of any pass rusher in the league when he got hurt. Um, so they don't have the one guy now. So, again, we don't know if they're looking for one or if they feel they can scheme it up. Uh, but um, they're pretty good on the back end. Branch is as multidimensional a safety as there is in the league. Um, he's a really good football player. Uh, the... ESPN NFL Matchup Show is a great resource, as you well know, because you can see Greg, you can see Darius Butler, you can see Sal Pal every week getting you ready for the latest slate of games. You can uh, get it on demand on ESPN Plus as well, if you're so inclined. Uh, AFC South game this week, Greg, that's interesting is the Colts and the Texans. I mean, the Colts are, are, are winning games right now, whether it's Flacco, whether it's Richardson. What do you make of Anthony Richardson right now? I don't know if this game is in the matchup show or it's not. not. It's, just, it's not. It's not. It was our last game. game out. It was our last game out. Yeah. Um, because the Colts offense with Richardson is a little bit of a hard watch right now. Sure. I mean, Richardson is really struggling with what he sees and his his ball location. And he's not just missing by a little. Um, so, you know, at some point, there's going to have to be improvement in those areas. Or he's just a guy that occasionally could make a big play. And, and, and you know, is he physically gifted? Oh, ridiculously so. But, you know, the NFL quarterback position is more than just being physically gifted. So 
we'll see how he develops. You know, I think last week, I, I forget what his overall numbers were, but I think at one point I saw on TV watching on the red zone, they was like seven for 21 or something like that. You know, yeah. he's going seven to you know, seven for 21, 129 yards passing uh, and 56 rushing yards. Yeah. So, I mean, is like I said, can he make a big play at any time? You know, sure, he can. But that's he's going to have to continue to improve. So we'll see. You know, what's been interesting this year is there have been two teams, two defenses um, that have totally shut down the Texans passing game, Minnesota and Green Bay. And because um, Stroud threw for less than 100 yards this week. And, um, um, you know, the Colts are not necessarily a difficult defense tactically because Gus Bradley pretty much plays what he plays. So, you know, I would expect Stroud to come back and have a big game. But it's been interesting that there there have been two teams that have really shut down that pass game. Yeah, I mean, the, the Texans, it was always going to be an interesting watch this season just because their schedule becomes so much more difficult. And and they weren't overwhelmingly, like, lighting teams up. But you could clearly tell that C.J. Stroud was special and, and also benefiting from And also them. Nico Collins is not there, so... Yeah, that's yeah. that's part of the equation too. Uh, so with the matchup show, Greg, what piece in particular would you like people to focus on? Because I'm looking at this Bill Seahawks game with uh, a lot of interest. There's some fun games on the board this week. There's always fun games. But well, it's funny. I did a piece which I really liked on, believe it or not, on Russell Wilson. But it's uh, it's not just oh, it's Russell Wilson. But I think people take note of it because. To me, it's a piece that really speaks to what football is, you know, and the way teams truly scheme and attack areas. You know, it's I'm not sure that, you know, I mean, that's the world in which I live, Buck, as you know, you know, watching tape all day long. So that's a piece I'm, I'm particularly proud of. Um, um, I did the Bill Seahawks game. I did the Falcons Bucks game. Don't forget, it was only week five that um, Kirk Cousins threw for 509 yards against the Bucks. So they're they're having a rematch. And I got a call from a coach two days later telling me that, and he'd been in the league 30 years, that he thought that that may have been the best passing performance he's ever seen. So, you know, that that's so obviously I did a piece on that doing the, yeah. the head to head matchup. Well, it was a crazy uh, Thursday night game for Kirk yeah. Cousins, certainly. And the Steelers hosting the Giants this week, Russ. 264 for, and two touchdowns, had a 109 rating uh, in his first start of the season last week for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So you can check all of that out, of course, on the NFL Matchup Show. Uh, Greg, I don't know what Detroit is going to hold. I don't know how many more uh, Titans players are going to be out there or not out there on the practice field when I go to practice today. But certainly, you and I will be here next Wednesday. Yes, talking about no whatever. matter what, I, I don't believe I'm going to be traded, so I'll be here. <laughs> you, I'm not worried about. It's me, bud. It's, I mean, <laughs> they're either buying me out or sending me to send hey. me to Siberia. I don't know. <laughs> See you, buddy. All right, thanks, Buck.